There are many scenarios where you may want to compute summary calculations of your Pi system data. One of the most common calculations are running totals, where you may want to know daily, monthly, and yearly running totals of a Pi tag as its input. I'm interested in configuring these calculations for tag where of each event indicates a discrete number of items manufactured, as well as for tags that indicate the continuous flow rate of a sellable product. These are known as event-weighted and time-weighted calculations. This video will focus on the event-weighted scenario, but there is a separate video linked for the time-weighted case. We'll finish up by discussing how imperfect data such as IO timeouts or shutdown events affect our result, and we'll come up with a second more robust solution. Let's start by discussing how incoming data affects our event-weighted calculations. Here we have an example data set of data coming in once an hour. We want to set up the daily running total resetting each day at midnight based on an event-weighted calculation. I've indicated midnight here on our data sets, and I've overlaid our plot with the data that's on the left. For some values such as five, you can see here that there are repeat events, but there's a value of eight that comes in at five o'clock and there's no additional event until seven. We're gonna do an event-weighted calculation and we'll calculate each time a new event comes in. And this makes sense when each event represents a number of units being produced, such as widgets. Our total is going to reset at midnight, so 5 is our first value that comes in right at midnight. And the total at 4 p.m. would look something like this. Notice that the two values of 5 are each included in our calculation, but even though we have a value of 8 for 4 hours, it's, since it's event-weighted and not time-weighted, it only gets counted once. So we have a total of 90 widgets so far today. The approach we're going to use is to utilize Asset Framework with Analysis Service, or Asset Analytics. We're going to specify the input attribute, and this is mapped to a Pi tag as a Pi point data reference, and the Analysis Service syntax is similar to performance equations. We're going to be event triggered, and this makes sense for event weighted calculations. So each time a new event comes in, we're going to get an updated value. And we're going to output it to a tag for saving the calculation history. Now, because we're using PE syntax, it's very customizable, and this is just one example. You need to consider the amount of underlying data in your summary calculations. So sometimes we're going to be calling for data over a time range from the PyData archive, and you need to understand that the longer that time range is and the more events there are, uh, the more difficult it would be for the PyData archive to return those values. For larger queries such as the yearly running total, it may make more sense to use an incrementer approach, which is going to be our second solution. Also, there is a completely alternate approach of using PyPoint data reference value retrieval methods, which is discussed in a linked video. So we're going to go through a few examples of event-weighted running totals in this video. The first is going to use the tag mean combined with the event count functions. By definition, tag mean is an event-weighted mean. We can combine the tag mean and the event count and multiply those together to get the event-weighted total. Then we'll go ahead and discuss the consequences of imperfect data with digital sets, or if your percent good is less than 100%. We'll then go through an alternate approach, the incrementer approach, using multiple functions, including bad val, no output, and prev event. And we'll discuss how to do this all in this video. Let's go ahead and hop on to PySystem Explorer and set up this first example using tag mean and event count. So here we have our incoming production data, widget production, as an attribute. Let's go ahead and head on over to the Analysis tab to configure our daily and monthly running totals. I'm going to set this as daily and monthly running totals. And I'm not going to do the yearly running total for this example, but I will for the second example. Since this is you doing a summary call, which could call a lot of information from the PyData archive. Let me make my first variable production. And this is going to be linked to our widget production attribute. I'm just doing this because we're going to reuse this and I don't want to have to type out widget production multiple times. It'll be easier to just type production. We'll start with the daily running total. And as I said, the way to take a event weighted total is to use two functions, tag mean and event count. So the first one is tag mean and our calculation is on production. 
and we need to go back to midnight today. So I'm going to use T all the way up to now or star. And I'm going to do the same thing for event count. and hit evaluate. And our total so far today as event weighted is 92. Now this calculation will fail if you get an event exactly at midnight. So we can fix that by putting an if then else statement in. So it is tr event triggered so it is somewhat rare that you might get an event exactly at midnight but we still should account for that. So if the current time is midnight, so if right now is equal to midnight today, so if it is currently midnight, and I hold down shift and hit enter to get a new line, then instead of doing a summary calculation, we do want it to reset at midnight, so it would just be the current production value. And if it's not midnight, then we can use an else statement. So you can see here our daily running total is if it is currently midnight then just give me the value that was at midnight or the current event triggered value otherwise do the tag mean times event count calculation that we had discussed let's do a copy and paste and we'll make a similar calculation for monthly running total and we'll adjust it slightly as needed So in this case, my if statement is going to be slightly different. The only time I need to be careful where if the event that comes in is exactly at midnight um, is also going to be on the first day of the month. So if star equals t and the day of the month is equal to 1, then just give me that event that came in right then. Otherwise, I'm going to take the tag mean of production. And instead of using T, we're going to be at, go back to the beginning of the month, midnight on the first day of the month. So that is BOM for beginning of month, based on our star. And the event count would be beginning of month, again, for star. Let me hit evaluate. And so far this month, we have 1,250 event-weighted total uh, for our production tag, or our widget production tag. And we're going to leave the scheduling here at event triggered. And if you have a lot of events coming in, this approach may not work as well, because you may be doing a lot of summary calls um, each time the event comes in. Okay, and now I check them in, so let's map them out. Let me say we have a new attribute, and this is going to be our daily running total. And this is going to be our monthly running total. Let's check that back in. It's starting. And then we'll go ahead and back fit the calculation and check the result. Let's go back to at least uh, a few months so we can check the daily and monthly running totals since the first of the year. Go to attributes. Let's check the daily running total. Let's take a trend here. We'll just go back a few days and you can see here the daily monthly running total. Now it looks like there is some data missing. This is actually most likely due to compression. If you want all of these data values uh, you can change that. We'll go ahead and go to settings and click this little button here. And you'll be able to see here that compression is turned on. So if you want to make sure that you get every event that comes in saved into the archive uh, for the calculation, uh, be sure to turn off exception and compression. Okay, and let's go ahead and also look at the monthly running total.
And you can see here that it reset correctly at midnight on the 1st of April. Now what happens when your data includes some digital states with this approach? Here's our existing data. We have values at 1, 2, 3, and 4 p.m., of values of 6, 4, 5, and 4. So the tag mean calculation returns a value from midnight to 4 p.m. of 5.353, and the event count rever returns a value of 17. You multiply those together and you get a value of 91 as our event weighted total. However, let's say there was an IO timeout event that came in at 2.30. The tag mean calculation over that time period actually remains the same, and it handles the IO timeout well. It returns a value of 5.353. However, the event count, instead of being 17, is now 18, because it includes that digital state. So we get an a erroneous result of 96.353. We can't use percent good to correct for this since percent good is inherently a time weighted calculation. So to overcome this, in case you need to handle digital states, we're going to switch to a completely different approach, the incrementer approach. We're going to use different functions for this one. These are bad val, no output, and prev event. And we're going to go ahead and do the daily, monthly, and yearly running total this time, since we're not going to do a summary calculation to do this. Instead, we're going to look at our previous result and then add our current result to that previous result when we don't have a bad digital state. Let's go ahead and hop on over into PSE and configure this second incrementer approach. Let's go to the Analysis tab and let me create a new analysis. And I'm going to call this incrementer daily, monthly, and yearly running totals. And I'll create my first variable and call it production. And that'll be linked to the attribute widget production. And I'll create my new first variable here, and this is daily running total. And let's go ahead and type in our expression. Now we're using a completely different approach. We're going to output the result of this calculation to a tag or an attribute called ink daily running total. And each time this calculation event triggers on the production attribute, we're going to add that new value to our existing ink daily running total. So I need to take production and add that to an attribute called ink daily running total, which I have not created yet. So I'm going to type it in here and I'm going to go ahead and map the output of this calculation to ink daily running total. Now this looks like it might be a circular reference, but it's actually not because we're not triggering on ink daily running total. We're only triggering on production. Okay. Now there's a few levels of improvements that we can do on this very simple calculation. The whole point of this was to better handle digital states. So the first thing we're going to do is do an if then else statement. And the if is going to be if the production event that just came in for widget production is a bad val, or in other words, any one of the digital states, then we're not going to actually do the calculation for that event. So if, and the function we use is bad val. So if bad val, meaning if it's a digital state of our production equals true, then we have no output. else we do this calculation and then output to <clears throat> our ink daily running total. Now right now we have no way of resetting at uh, each day so the next thing we need to do is add a second if then else statement. So that'll be after this first else. So we need to say if it's a different day and the way we're going to do that is first we're going to check the day of our current incoming production widget production event. So if the day of our currently triggering event is different than the day of the last value of ink daily running total. And the way we do that is since the ink daily running total is not now because it's the last one that we saved, we can use the prev event function here. 
So first we're going to end up having to take the day of this, and then it's the prev event. And that's of the ink daily running total. So it's going to, we use star here because it's going to look for what is the event that happened just previous to now. And that is going to be the most recent ink daily running total event. Okay. And there's one additional level of complexity I want to add here. When you first create this analysis, the output tag ink daily running total is going to have a point created event in it. And that's going to cause problems whenever you try and add the current production value to point created, and it's going to error out and say you can't add those two. So we can also do uh, add one additional level and say, if you happen to have point created, just write the next value that you got. So we're going to add an or statement here. If production equals point created. And I need to add my then statement where this is the reset and my else statement where I do the addition. All right, let's go ahead and check this in. And I'm going to show on a second screen the total result in just a second since the resolution I have here is a little bit hard to see. So let's check it in, wait for it to start. Let me go to my attributes tab. I'm going to, oh, the point already created. And let me do a backfill. And a refresh. And here's our incremental daily running total. And the value is actually the same for the previous example because we don't have any digital states here. Um, but let me go ahead, right click and trend and show you that it's working for the last 10 days, as you can see here. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the monthly running total and yearly running total. I'm not actually gonna go through it in this window. I'm just gonna show the result here and explain the differences since it is a little bit hard to see um, as I go through it in this window. And here I have my example now of the alternate method, the incrementer approach, event triggered. Here, let me show you the monthly running total differences. Uh, I've done something slightly different here for the monthly running total. All I've had to do is add in this and day. And again, this is um, the and is part of this entire statement uh, so that we reset only when the day is different and we happen to be moving into the first day of the month. So that makes sense for the monthly running total. And then for the yearly running total, it adds another and statement uh, for when the day is the first day of the month and the month is the first month of the year. So that is one and statement. And then separate from that, again, is the or statement, uh, which can handle the point created in case uh, you don't backfill or manually delete the point created out of your calculation. So let's go ahead and take a look at our summary of what we've done in this video. First, we configured the event weighted running total examples uh, for the tag mean times event count situation. Um, this may not be very practical for frequently updating tags. However, digital states are counted in the event count, but not included in the tag mean calculation. So this approach does not handle digital states like IO timeout or shutdown very well. And we can't use the percent good correct for this because percent good is inherently a time weighted calculation. We overcame this by going into a second approach, the incrementer approach, which adds the current production value to a previous total that we output for each calculation. Uh, we use bad val to overcome the digital states in this case. And then we reset based on what our current value is and what or our current timestamp is and what the timestamp of our last saved event was. And we came up with a way to do this for daily, monthly, and yearly running totals. And then I also showed you an approach of how to handle point created in this case, since you can't add point created to a value and get a good calculation.